standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. During the National Anthem and Pledge, please remove your hats and place your hand over your heart. Those in academic regalia may leave your mortarboards on. Former military may salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The national anthem will be presented by Shirley Williams. Please be seated. So good morning, graduates, and good morning to all of the family and friends who are here to celebrate this momentous occasion. On behalf of all of us at Digital Media Arts College, we want to welcome you to your commencement ceremony. Today marks the 11th annual ceremony at DMAC, and we're proud to announce that you will soon be part of an alumni group which comprises of, of over 570 graduates. Before we start, I would like to recognize a few individuals. First, special thanks to our very own Ms. Cherie Williams for a wonderful rendition of the National Anthem. And to the students of Spanish River High School who are, who are helping us coordinate the ceremony. So before we introduce our commencement speaker, I just want to state how proud we all are of you to make it to this day. I know it hasn't been easy, but many of you have come, overcome the challenges and obstacles and persisted through these past years and have accomplished something that many don't. Many of you have even started in our old building on Federal Highway, and just accomplishing, overcoming that challenge is a big deal. 
And many of us have seen all of you grow. And we want to make sure you take that same persistence and determination as you continue down your journeys. This is the end of one of those journeys, but the beginning of many more. Now I would like to introduce Dr. Joe to come up and introduce our commencement speech. my undergraduate work, finding myself about 10 years into a relatively uh, successful career as a post-production artist, like most young people are apt to do, I felt very confident in my abilities. Shortly after deciding to continue my formal education, I stepped into a graduate class and met the man I am introducing to you. It took about an hour of listening to him for me to realize that not only were there huge gaps in my production knowledge base. But after hearing just a fraction of what he had accomplished in his own life, I needed to seriously revise my own approach to the professional world. I needed to work harder, and I needed to work smarter. He gave me great insight into opportunities I had not previously considered, but most importantly, how I could effectively evaluate the feasibility of capitalizing on those opportunities. He's perhaps the most practical man I've ever met. His no-nonsense views of life combined with the work ethic of the Energizer Bunny makes me proud to call him a friend at this stage in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Alex Rosenberg. Thank you, Dom, for the sublime introduction. I will try to live up to it. So, let me take a deep breath now. Hold it the same. Good. Good morning. How's everybody doing so far? My Facebook, my LinkedIn, and my IMDb states that I am an award-winning writer, director, producer, and cinematographer. I have been in film production business for over 40 years. I have been a president, a partner, a CEO of several commercial film production companies in New York and Miami. And I have made coffee, swept the floors, and washed the dishes. Presently, I'm also a chauffeur to my 14-year-old son. And I love it. I have written, directed, and produced over 100 commercial projects for such companies as American Express, Prudential Insurance, IBM, Chevrolet, and Sprint. I have directed music videos for all the major record companies, including CBS, RCA, Universal Music, and Warner Brothers, and worked with such mega groups as Aerosmith. Clips from one of my music specials collectively have over 8 million hits on YouTube. And my wife still inserts, insists that I cut the grass and take out the garbage. So life continues me. Through my companies, I oversaw and directed endless promotional, educational, instructional, and inspirational corporate films, numerous documentaries, multi-screen multimedia events, and I have written, directed, and produced an award-winning feature film distributed all over the world. But I'm not famous, not even close. So why am I here? Well, a few months ago, I got an email asking me if I was interested in being the 2015 DMAC commencement speaker. Now mind you, I never heard of DMAC before. Tom informed me that he got a new position at a small college in Boca Raton called Digital Media Arts College and asked me if I was interested in teaching a class in screenwriting. So I reread the email a few times before calling my wife. I said, hey sweetie, they want me to be 2015 commencement speaker at DMAC. Isn't that terrific? There was a dead pause on the other end, and then she said, That's wonderful, dear, but you're not famous. And you get tongue-tied when you get nervous. So, we'll see. so, there's nothing like a loving wife 
to deflate your ego in a nanosecond. <laughs> do you think I should do it? I asked. There was another pause. Sure, she replied, and then added, did you feed the dog? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. My wife is terrific and I love her dearly. We've been married now for over 28 wonderful years. So without thinking it through, I emailed back right away and said, yes, I'd be delighted and honored. The next day, as I was walking my dog and picking up his poop, it dawned on me that I never done a comm commencement speech and no idea what I would say. And as my wife, ever so diplomatically, reminded me I am not famous, and it is true, when I get nervous, I get tongue-tied. So here I was with two strikes against me before a single word of commencement speech was written. So, why am I telling you all this? Well, simply because these few minutes that I have with you today required a lot of prep time. And I want to share with you a concept that took me years to come to terms with. And that concept is that life is made up of moments like this where you are asked to step up to the plate and show what you got. These moments are the bullet points of your life. These moments shape how people perceive you and how you shape your own narrative. The rest of your time is, is a dress rehearsal where you, uh, where you hone your skills as a storyteller to prepare for these moments. Yes, Everyone has a story and everyone is a storyteller. Think about it. Your first friend, your first date, first interview, first job, first meeting, first assignment. You're always introducing yourself and telling and retelling your story. So here I, I am and here you are. The graduates, class of 2015, Eager and bushy tail. In the moment, ready for a new chapter in your life. I must admit, I am nervous standing here in front of you, doing my best not to mumble and compete with your smartphones to your, for your attention. Everybody got their smartphones off? I must admit, that okay. Robert De Niro gave a 2015 commencement speech to the NYU Tisch School graduates, where he opened by saying, Tisch graduates, you made it, and you are effed. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, check it out, it's on YouTube, like everything else. Seriously. You have chosen career paths that are not easy, and I'm sure you were discouraged by many, especially those who love you the most. You can't blame them. They don't want to see you get hurt. It's a tough business. It's not an easy journey. There will be many disappointments and outright perceived disasters. You must have an incredible grit and resilience. Aaron Serkin, who wrote A Few Good Men, President, and Malice, to name a few, said, the world does not care how many times you fall down, as long as it's one fewer than the number of times you get back up. It's tough and never ends, but you got to learn. In 1992, probably before most of you were born, I was in Russia working on a feature film I co-wrote and was slated to direct. It was a $5 million movie. Not a big budget by Hollywood standards, but we were going to make it look like 20 million for sure. It was the Wild West in Russia at the time. Communist Soviet Union just fell apart and everything was up for grabs. We got the largest studio in St. Petersburg and started building enormous sets. The story called for a huge battle, so we got a dozen tanks, armored vehicles, assault helicopters, and a battalion of combat troops all secured by our Russian partners. From our end, the American side, we had to raise US dollars to pay American principal actors. They didn't have any dollars. We made a deal with William Morris Agency 
for three recognizable names on what you would call a pay or play contract, which means the actors are paid whether the picture gets made or not. That was my first feature film, so I was ecstatic and terrified at the same time. A lot was right in this picture, and we were on the hook for, to William Morris for $700,000. Between my first trips to Russia to make the initial deal with our Russian partners, to the time I was there working on a pre-production, six, mo six months had passed. I pretty much closed down my commercial production company in New York and was ready for the big picture. Everything was going great. The American cast was scheduled to arrive the following week to start principal photography. My star was on the rise. I remember I was in my hotel room working on a shooting script when I got a fax from New York from William Morris. Where is the money? A cold sweat ran down my young spine. What the heck? I'm sure I used the more colorful language. I contacted my financiers in California. The money to pay the actors, the $700,000 that was secured through a complex real estate deal and was sitting in the bank before I left and was to be released to William Morris that day, suddenly vaporized. Now, the entire deal with the Russians hinged on our providing American principal cast so the picture could be made, marketed outside of Russia. No cast, no picture. My rising star has just crashed. All the money spent by us in development in the past two years and by Russian partners in pre-production was down the toilet. I was toast, literally. Barely getting out of Russia in one piece, I came back to New York with no picture, no prospects, no company, no money, and $700,000 on hook with William Morris. I felt like a total failure. Later, I learned that the money was slated for the cast was taken by one of the financial partners, who turned out to be judgment-proof. Means he couldn't sue him. After pleading my case to the actors and the William Morris agency, they let me off the hook. Still don't know why. Maybe they just felt sorry for me. I guess I just got lucky. I sold my house in Brooklyn and with my wife moved into a studio apartment. For a while I was really, really lost. At one point, my wife asked me, when am I going to stop this craziness and get a real job? You try, you fail, move on. So, J.K. Rowling, in her speech to Harvard graduates said, it is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. So we moved to Florida. I rebuilt my film production business and seven years later I got the opportunity again to make a feature film. This time, I was, I was com it was completed, and out of 1,100 feature film submissions and 150 films screened at the Houston World Fest International Film Festival, I won first prize, gold special jury award, and best first feature film. So, this diploma you're receiving today is just the beginning, a one-way ticket for the first leg to get on the train to start your own journey. I wish I were graduating all over again with what I know now, wishing I knew then. Of course, that's not possible. After all, when I was 20, I was convinced that I knew everything there is to know in the universe. I must admit, it was a wonderful to be that, in that fuzzy, cuddly, delusional state when I felt indestructible and the sky was the limit. I hope you all experience that, at least for a brief moment. So what's the formula for success? Mary de Vieira said, the only formula is that there is no formula. 
There is no easy way to get from point A to point B, nor is there any right way. So what bits of wisdom can I pass on to you that may stick? First and foremost, get a mentor. If you don't have one, or didn't have one, find one. I got lucky. I found my mentor in a high school art teacher, Mr. Friend, who pushed me to the limit and made me what I am today. Besides my parents, who you should thank, I owe my successes, you should thank your own parents, and <laughs> I owe my own successes to him, seriously. And that is why, no matter what, I always have taken the time to mentor others. Pay that. Second, when you tell your story, don't be afraid to embrace your fears and your failures. It's part of your narrative. Third, don't get discouraged. Easy to stay and hard to do. But if, you, if it were easy to do, everyone would be doing it. You are not everyone. And lastly, wear comfortable shoes. It's going to be a long journey. Yes, you need to get a job. Move out of your parents' home and start paying off your student loans. Yes, there is a tons of competition out there. Yes, you will be rejected time and time again. Yes, at times you will not get a job, trophy, or allocate you. You know you so deserve. Sometimes you feel like life is really sucks. It's not fair. But looking on the upside, life is short. And looking on the downside, life is short. Make, them, make every moment count. Yes, at times your dreams will recede into a black hole. A black hole you will want to crawl into and never look at yourself in the mirror again. Yes, expect all that and a lot worse, because you have earned, entered into a world you have chosen. You have entered the wonderful, wacky world of entertainment. But, but this is your calling, your choice, your destiny, your quest, your journey, your love. Frank McCord, who wrote Angela's Ashes, once said, if, don't, if you don't love what you're doing, you're dead. Harsh, but it's true. You have paid for the ticket. It's time to get on the train and go for the ride. Now you're the hero in your own story, your quest. As you all well know, from all the action adventure video games and movies, the hero's story starts with a quest, which the hero does not necessarily want, and or feels he or she is prepared to take on, but somehow is pushed into it anyway. The hero is always lost in the beginning. He or she doesn't have a clue as to how to achieve her, his or her goal. And inevitably, inevitably must get advice from an old sage. Remember the mentor. So out of the blue, the old sage, poking his, poking his wrinkled finger into the hero's chest, whispers, you need to embrace ADD. The old sage, being old and cranky, is always cryptic in his advice, and the hero has to figure out on his own what the heck this guy is talking about. Attention deficit disorder? What kind of advice is that? Questions are here. The old, shake, old, the old sage shakes his head in disappointment. He takes his rickety stick and slowly spells it out in the sand. Action, direction, dedication. Boo, cries the hero. That really sucks. Well, it's not as sexy as may the force be with you, is it? But since you have entered into the entertainment industry willingly, these three words will serve you well. Of course, only if you tattoo them across your forehead, snickers the old saying. But seriously, he frowns and wraps his arm around the hero's shoulder. You're about to embark on a difficult journey, and what A, action, you will take, what D, direction, you will choose, 
and how deep dedicated you are to your journey will determine not whether you will become a superstar or a multimillionaire, but how well you will live your life between those new moments you are asked to step up to the plate and show what you got. And true to the old sage mythology, the old sage vaporizes on the spot, leaving our bewildered hero scratching his head. What just happened? George Lucas, who sold his ILM and Star Wars franchise to Disney for over $2 billion, was quoted saying, part of the issue of achievement is to be able to set realistic goals. But that's one of the hardest things to do because you don't always know exactly where you're going. And you shouldn't. So take advice as it comes. Some will be right on. Some, not so. And some, you'll have no idea what it is till much later. But always stay inspired. And remember that inspiration is wasted without serious perspiration. So in conclusion, I'll quote Juliana Margolis. Believe anything is possible and then work like hell to make it happen. Good luck to each and every one of you. And thank you for sharing this special occasion with me. So thank you, Mr. Rosenberg, for your inspiring words to our graduates. It is my pleasure to present you with the 2015 Commencement Speaker Award. This award is in recognition for your contributions to the film industry and for being our commencement speaker for our 2015 graduating class. Thank you. For those 
those of you who are not able to attend our commencement reception last evening, we would like to take a brief moment to again congratulate our distinguished graduates. Please hold your applause until the names of all the distinguished graduates are announced. Graduates, when your name is called, please rise. Distinguished computer animator, Janice Liu. Please be seated, Janice. Thank you. Distinguished graphic designer, Ashley Gorman. Please be seated, Ashley. Congratulations once again. is someone who I first met over 10 years ago. He was one of DMAC's first MFA graduates, uh, and since then has proven himself to be a true professional. Over that 10 years, David was my first hire as a full-time professor here at Digital Media Arts College, a position he held for a little over than six years. While teaching for DMAC, he also ran his own photography and design firm, Vision House. It quickly became apparent over those years that David was meant for success. He is an extremely creative, intelligent, and driven designer. Since David has left DMAC, he has taken on the position of Art Technical Director and Founder for Full Color Creative, and most recently holds the position of Interactive Design Director for the company formerly known as TG Madison Advertising, now simply known as Chemistry. Not only was David my employee and coworker, but he also became a close friend. He has helped me grow both as a professional and in person over the years, and even though he no longer lives in Florida, our friendship still carries on. Until this day, I know that no matter when I call David, he is always there to offer advice, or simply be there when needed, or just simply to catch up over lost time. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished graduate speaker, my friend, Mr. David Massey. Hi there, well, thanks Mike, and thanks Sonny and DMAC for inviting me back. Um, it's great to see so many friendly faces. It's, uh, it's a real honor to be here. And Alex, I'm not famous either, but my kids think so. So that's what, that's what really matters, right? So I, I gotta say that uh, my time here when I was at DMAC uh, was some of the most special times of my life. I really miss being in the classroom, um, and I gotta tell you guys, everybody that's graduating here today, faculty and staff, you know, this is, you're very lucky, it's a great place to be. So, I'm sure this is part of the day that most of you are looking forward to the least. Listening to some guy you've never met or heard of, drone on about the future and all that good stuff, right? Well, too bad. <laughs> now, I promise I'll, I'll make it as short and painless as possible. I'll give you a little background on myself. Uh, I've been working in the creative field for almost two decades now. I've worked on everything from little mom and pop shops all the way to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, and today, I manage digital projects like websites, apps, you know, all that digital geekery. And uh, we, I, I do it for all the clients in our agency, and some of them you may have heard of. Uh, Marriott, PNC, H&R Block. You know, get your billions back to America. We didn't come up with that. We should Um, and today, uh, I have to say that uh, I have a hard job. I get to direct a bunch of you guys. That's real work. You guys can be a handful. But I wouldn't trade it for anything. I absolutely love what I do. And that's key in anything that you do. That's why you went to DMIT, right? Get a degree in something that you love. Right? So that leads me here to you. It's the reason why we're here today. You've got to work your butts off. You've made it. You've turned in all your projects, pitched your last pitches, taken your last test. You're good. You're done, right? You're ready to take on the world, go out, be a rock star, get that incredible job, right? Right out of school. 
Good luck. <laughs> now, what I want you to do, you guys here in front, I want you to look to your left. I'll wait. <laughs> look to your left and look to your right. Those in the aisle, sorry. This way. That's your competition. Now, it's not in a Game of Thrones kind of way. Nobody's going to lose their head. But it means you have to constantly better yourself. You've got to improve your skills and pay attention to trends. If you don't, the person next to you will. All of us in this field, we thrive on recognition for the good work that we do. We've got big egos, right? Yes, yes, we do. I know I do. And that's good, though. That's what drives us to be better, right? So never lose that drive. And never lose that want and the drive to get the smile and nod to your work. You know what a smile and nod is, right? You've got, you got any class, I'm sure. Now, one trait of a successful person, creative or not, is persistence. Calvin Coolidge, a former U.S. president for all us art majors, once said this about persistence. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a problem. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan press on has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. That was said almost 100 years ago, but it's still true today. So if you don't constantly push to improve yourself, if you think the jobs will come to you, if you think you are too good to take a junior position because you had that one semester of internship, you will become unsuccessful men and women with talent. Talent will go a long way, but if you don't have the drive and determination to kick ass on a daily basis, you will be left behind to wonder, how am I going to pay for my student loans? So, with persistence, you will succeed. It may not be the first time, it may not be the tenth time, but you will succeed. Now, where there's persistence, there's failure. I know I've, I've failed at a number of things. I've fallen flat on my face, and I've got scars to prove it. But failure is a funny thing. When it happens, it sucks, right? You go over in your head, what could I have done better? Why me? And all these other things, you know, self-realization uh, types of questions. But those are the times that you learn the most about yourself. You find out who the real you is. Experiencing failure is the only way to understand success. I remember when I was a junior designer for a watercolor artist. My job was to cre recreate by hand my boss's artwork in different layouts in watercolor. And yes, there was a time that design was done on something other than a computer. Let me tell you, watercolor is hard. You know, I think little kids can do it. Man, that stuff's hard to do it right. So I must have gone through 50 sheets of this really, really expensive paper. And I would paint and paint and paint. And every time my boss would just look at me and shake his head. I feel like such a loser. But then it happened. He was on his way out one night. He came over and he gave me the smile and nod. From that day, I was like, give me more watercolor. And then we got Photoshop on a scanner. <laughs> but it was a win, so I took it. But failure is a part of life. It doesn't have to cripple us though. It should empower us. We should take each fail as if it's a step to perfection. It may be a tall staircase, but it's yours. Own it. Learn from it. I've been in your seat. I know your fears. I know that life and career paths change. But if you remember only one thing that I've said today, let it be this. Press on and don't suck.
Thank you and congratulations. You guys are awesome. Thank you, David, for your inspiring words to our graduates. It is my pleasure to present to you the 2015 Distinguished Graduate Speaker Award. This award is in recognition for your contribution to the graphic design industry and for being our Distinguished Graduate Speaker for the 2015 graduating class. So before we begin, the conferral of degrees. I would like to ask the faculty and staff of Digital Media Arts College to please rise and be recognized. So at this time, we will begin the conferral of degrees. Will the associate candidates approach the stage? Diego Benjamin Chenick. <laughs> Will the Bachelor of Fine Arts and Graphic Design candidates approach the stage? Amanda Bergman, Kuhn Logan. <laughs> Julia Bajulazing, Kuhn Logan. Joseph Coates. <laughs> Emily Crooker.
Ashley Gorman. So much. Brenny Perez. Seltzer, Ulova. <laughs> Armando Sorel.
arts and computer animation candidates approach the stage. Nadia Bader. Raul Feliciano. Stephen Gubatosi. Joshua Hall. Christopher Marks. <laughs> Nick 
Michael Small. Aaron Swindell, Magna. Sergio Melissio. So on behalf of Digital Media Arts College, it is my pleasure to present candidates for the graduating class of 2015. Candidates, please rise and remain standing. study and conferred, I wish you my sincerest congratulations, and by the authority vested in me by the state of Florida, I confer upon you the degree awarded with all of the rights and privileges thereof. It is now time to please move your tassel from left to the right to symbolize the completion of your educational journey. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming the 2015 commencement class. Thank you. 